Hey everybody and welcome to the Quadcopter Review. I'm your host Pepe Prons and today we're going to be looking at the Tiny GT7 by LDARC, formerly known as King Kong. So we got the basic package on our little package here, but let's go ahead and take a look what we got in the box. Now, of course, the first thing we're going to have in the box is the Tiny GT7 itself, and this is a 75mm 2S brushless quadcopter, and it is a pretty nice, pretty solid looking little piece of machinery. We're also getting ourselves a 380mAh 2S battery. Also inside the box, we have a big bag of goodies that we're going to take a look at inside of and see what individually we have there. Of course, it does come in the little lunchbox case that they are known for having, but let's see what we got inside this little bag of goodies here. The first thing we're going to have is four clockwise and four counterclockwise props, so two full sets of props extra for you to have. We're also going to have a USB cable, and you're going to need this cable because uh, to plug this in, I'll show you later, is kind of in a tight little spot, so you're definitely going to want to use theirs. We're also going to get some bolts that both double for holding the motors on and holding the propellers on. We're also going to get the manual, and it is in English and Chinese, and this manual is pretty thorough and pretty nice. Shows you everything from what's in the kit, what's in the Tiny 8 kit, and uh, where the buttons are, the bind buttons, your frequencies for your VTX, and all those kinds of things are all inside of here. Very helpful, very nice manual. The next thing we have is a very large sticker set, and if you've seen any pictures of this, uh, if you haven't, check out the links below. But if you've seen any pictures, uh, it looks pretty gussied up on the frame with stickers in. It looks like you're going to be putting those stickers on yourself, and they have not done that for you. The next thing we have in the kit is a manual for how to set up all your different receivers. I got an FR Sky receiver and it is D16. And you just need to be patient when you push that button because it will turn green. Now we also have a 2.54 and JST transfer wire as well that comes along with the little kit. Now one of the first things you're probably going to want to do is go ahead and remove this battery connector and switch it out for a JSC or something because uh, you're probably not going to have very many batteries that work with that. And obviously so far no one's really made the perfect whoop for us yet but that uh, that little wire I think was a mistake. So let's go ahead and look at the specifications. Well first thing we have are the 1535 props and those are your, more of your standard style of prop. They're not a ducted fan prop and obviously at one and a half inch. So those are much different than what we've seen so far. It also comes with the OV-231, 800 TLV, 150 degree field of view camera, the Q25 VTX, and that is a 25 milliwatt only VTX with 16 channels, and the OSD is built in the VTX, not on Betaflight, mistake number two. It is an SP Racing FC and 10 amp ESC, so it's pretty strong ESC. It comes in FR Sky, Fly Sky, and Spectrum. It has 0803 9000 kV motors. It is uh, pre set up with Betaflight SP Racing F3 because it is an F3 board, not an F4 like the Beta FPV. It weighs 40.5 grams, and that's without the battery and without the receiver. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit more about this USB. It is a tiny little USB area. It's between the ducts, and um, I found that my normal USBs don't work quite as well as the one they gave us. It also comes with an LED, which is not usually what we're finding on our whoops, but it does have a built-in LED there in the back. Now, another interesting thing about it is to control the VTX and to control your channels, they have added a button at the top, which is very nice. Um, to do the VTX, you're going to want to just plug in the battery and then work the button, and we'll show you here how that works. So you plug in the battery first on this one, and then as you push the button, you will see the two LEDs right here change what color format they are and inside the manual you can see what color combinations equal what channel right there in the manual so you watch as I click here uh, we're gonna go to 
light blue and dark blue. And if I click again, we have light blue and light blue. So light blue, light blue. And next we have red, red. So as you can see, we're changing channels by just pushing that button. Now to make changes to the uh, built-in OSD, what you're gonna wanna do is the same thing as you would do if you were going to bind a receiver. So that is hold the button down and then plug in the battery. Once you've done that, you can use your goggles or an external LCD and make the changes by using the button to make the changes to your OSD. And all that information's in the manual. And this is another one of the features I really don't like about it. It's just so much easier to be able to handle your OSD configuration inside of Betaflight or Butterflight or whatever you may use versus this methodology. But as I mentioned, this manual is very, very thorough. So you'll be able to go in there and see exactly what you can change in the OSD and how you can change it to get it set up the way you'd like to have it. Now, in any of my footage, I didn't make any changes to this yet because I really wasn't too concerned about it, uh, knowing that, you know, I'm not really using much and it's going to show me where I'm at on my battery, which is really all that's important to me when I'm flying. Now let's get to the part you've probably been waiting for. How does it fly? Now this first chunk of footage is with the stock PIDs and rates, which is pretty much stock. Uh, it doesn't look like anything had been changed in that. So for me, uh, it's not quite quick enough of a roll rate. So as you can see here, I'm not getting full and complete flips because I'm used to about a thousand on my rate and you know it comes in at like 687 or something so i'm not going to show you much of this stock version because it's just not going to be that entertaining uh one negative i found all right off the bat too in probably why beta fpv tilted their camera is i was going to give you a speed run through the yard here but i just couldn't do it without crashing because as i would get my nose down there with the camera angle all i kept doing was eating the grass so um, we, we likely are going to end up having to mod out some sort of camera angle uh, TPU for this, just like was done with the beta. Now here's another pack where I have made the pit adjustment and I've made the rate adjustment more along the likings of, of what I like, which is a much faster roll rate at about a thousand. So as you can see, we can get a, a nice one and a half flip in there, recover just fine. We're not getting any of that y'all wash out like was on the beta FPV. We're not getting uh, any kind of prop washing or, or flutter when we try to come out of these rolls. It's handling really, really well. That is a huge plus I can give it. It, it did fly really, really well, really solid. Um, I got an incredible amount of time out of the battery too, in my opinion. Um, it is definitely fast. Um, it is great outside. It was actually blowing a bit and I was able to fly just fine, even in the winds and, you know, double flip there without any kind of washouts afterwards, I thought was pretty, pretty impressive of it. Um, as far as inside goes, you know, I'm not going to fly it inside. I'll be very curious to see what, what Mr. Nick Burns does. It, but you know that is his gig he is the master of that racing style and he's got a nice big house to pull that off in i don't think even though i have a bigger house i don't think most people are going to be able to fly this inside because it's probably going to be too fast if you if you really open it up if you keep it mellow of course you can fly anything in the house but you know i don't know if i'm going to be flying this guy in the house but uh definitely an enjoyable flight it's um Besides, you know, the little corks you're going to have to fix, but I don't think I've had one yet that I haven't had to or want to make some sort of change to put the 1200 T TVL camera in, that kind of stuff. So we're always doing something to them, but it is definitely rock solid and it is a long flight time flyer. Uh, you'll see here when I get to the end, I think I get somewhere in the four minutes something and I stopped early. Uh, you'll see the battery bounce back almost to storage state already and uh, usually i'll fly them down to like 3.4 on one of these batteries so i'm going to leave you to the rest of the footage as always uh you know make sure you check out the current giveaways in the upper right hand corner uh, if you want my outro you'll also have an opportunity to link out to the giveaways and as always don't forget to subscribe like the video and tell your friends i do have the tiny eight and i will be reviewing that one next I suspect it's going to be pretty much the same in a bigger platform. So, as always, guys, happy flying.
guys, thanks for stopping by and checking out the quadcopter review. If you want to see more interesting reviews on FPV related stuff, take a look up here in the old right corner right there. You'll find links to all the rest of my reviews. If you want to get in on some of the best giveaways on YouTube, look over here. Don't forget to subscribe right here on my chin. And if you want to check out my flying only videos separated from the review channel, check that out right here. Thanks for coming. Don't forget to subscribe and happy flying.